Deep in the bowels of the maintenance sector lies the most important threshold for the modern FPC, the Black Rock Quarry. The resource which lies within revolutionized the containment of altered items. Black Rock is a paranatural mineral which, along with its reality of origin, holds many mysteries. Today I want to explore these mysteries, how the mineral itself functions, and what this tells us about resonance and altered items as a whole. Let's go. The research staff have a compendium of information on minerals found in thresholds entitled The Utilization of Paranatural Elements. One specifically discussed Black Rock. We learn that the reason the Bureau uses it to contain altered items and OOPs is because of the mineral's ability to block certain kinds of resonance. This brings up two questions. How does Black Rock impede resonance, and why does this stop some altered items from acting up? Before getting to these questions, let's pause and do something I haven't done in a while. A long-winded tangent about physics. Trust me though, this is important. This whole section will be an examination of waves and resonance. For the purposes of this discussion, we will look at two types, mechanical waves and electromagnetic waves. Mechanical waves are oscillations of matter that allow for the transfer of energy and information through mediums. Some examples include sound, vibrations, and seismic waves. When a giver of energy is excited, it sends waves to the receiver of energy. One classic example is between a pair of tuning forks. First, we take two forks with the same natural frequency. Then we excite one by striking it. Immediately, the energy will be transferred to the other and cause it to vibrate as well, despite there being no physical contact. Another example is the opera singer who shatters a glass with their voice. Electromagnetic waves, on the other hand, do not require a physical medium to transfer energy. They are propagated by a fusion of electric and magnetic fields. These are experienced as visible light, radiation, radio waves, etc. As we all know, some forms of electromagnetic waves can be tapped into. For example, a radio acts as a receiver for radio waves. The device converts it into a mechanical wave which can then be picked up by the human ear. Other forms of electromagnetic waves can be blocked such as in the case of radiation. Due to the high density of the mineral, lead has been shown to block both X-ray and gamma radiation. Dr. Darling himself commented that black rock acts as a form of paranatural lead. We have one final topic to cover before we get back to the game. That is the structure of a waveform. Waves can be simply broken down into a few parts. The amplitude or height of the waveform dictates the intensity. For mechanical sound waves, this would be the volume. The period or wavelength is the length of time the wave takes to finish one full oscillation. The quantity of the wavelengths that occur over a one second period is the frequency. This frequency is measured in hertz. With that, it is time to head back to the realm of control. The document I mentioned earlier states that due to the density of black rock, it blocks out all resonance between a specific hertz range. This is similar to lead blocking out radiation within a specific hertz range due to the density of the material. But black rock blocks frequencies of a different hertz range. While there is no information given on what this specific range is, there are a couple observations which may summon a deeper question about the nature of altered items as a whole. By placing an altered item within a black rock cell, it causes some of them to stop working entirely. Others, however, show no change when kept inside the cell, confirming that altered items resonate at different frequencies. Those that resonate within the Hertz range for black rock are affected by the mineral. Those that resonate either above or below this range are not affected. It's kind of like how aluminum can block alpha wave radiation, but cannot block gamma wave. This by itself is interesting enough, but it also suggests something deeper. The reason these objects even function as altered items is because of some form of resonance energy transfer. While researchers at the FBC confirm that black rock blocks waves, they do not specify what kind of waves, electromagnetic or mechanical. If it were mechanical, 
then the altered item's power would originate from something specific. A singer, so to speak. The metaphorical sound resonating with the item. This sound being blocked by the black rock which causes the effect to stop. Personally, I think it is more likely that the origin of the altered item's energy is electromagnetic. Something that exists all around us at all times. It goes along with the eldric horror themes of the setting. These altered items act like radios tuning into the frequency. A receiver of paranatural frequencies. Once the object resonates, the altered effect begins. Again, just like the radio converting the electromagnetic wave to something we can physically experience. Our planet is covered with different forms of electromagnetic waves that we are unaware of. Radio is just one, but also Wi-Fi, the signal from your garage door opener, radar, even your cell phone. Daily, we swim through an ocean of these invisible waves without being able to perceive their existence. Only by using a receiver such as the radio, the cell phone, or your computer do we become aware of them. In the setting of control, some of these waves or resonances are conscious entities. Polaris and the Hiss are two examples. But what if each and every altered item and object of power is also its very own conscious resonance, but of a different kind? These seek out physical objects as receivers so that their presence can be experienced by everyday people. Others, like Polaris, can use someone like Jesse as a receiver. For most of the game, Hedron acted as this receiver, converting the Polaris resonance into a mechanical wave which was used to power the HRAs. Like the radio converting the radio waves into sound so our ears can pick up on them. Without the radio though, we don't hear a thing. When Hedron, the receiver, was destroyed, the mechanical wave ceased to function. This caused the HRAs to shut off, and Jesse to briefly become infected. Only by becoming a new receiver and converting her resonance into a form the HRAs could pick up, did both she and those wearing HRAs become protected again. But this begs one final question. If altered items and objects of power are also some form of receiver for a conscious electromagnetic resonance, where do they originate? The Hiss have their own home dimension in the burnt Slidescape. Polaris supposedly originated from Slidescape 36, the Hand. I see only two possibilities. Either they originate from the Prime Reality and only sometimes find suitable receivers, or they originate elsewhere. Or both. Some have suggested that the other is the home dimension of some of these. For more information on that, I'd recommend checking out my previous video on that topic. The board has words on this subject. How the board fits into this equation is another story entirely. Either way, the study of Blackrock invites us to contemplate a new horror for this setting. If there are invisible, resonance-based entities that exist within the electromagnetic spectrum, then they surround our characters at all times. Inaudible whispers all around us, looking in, watching, but not able to touch. Not until they find something to hold their essence, a receiver to resonate with. Once entangled with physical manifestation, they are dangerous, and our attempts to contain them, even more so. Thank you all for watching. If you enjoyed, please drop a like and subscribe to receive updates on future uploads. If you would like to help support the channel, a Patreon has been set up and the link is in the description below. Have a great day and peace be with you all.